Hey guys, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott, thank you for tuning in today and thank you for your support. Today, I'm going to be talking about a record to die for. Um, I did one earlier record to die for video in recent, uh, like last week, and it should be up if you wanna take a look at it. I'll leave a link in the description box below. It is for Belafonte Sings the Blues, which I had a recent encounter with that just blew me away. And I was so excited about it, I decided to start a series of sonically, artistically, and musically uh, superior records. And this one definitely, this classical one definitely falls into that camp. Um, so I'll tell you all about it in a second. Before I get started, very quickly, we're at almost at 5,000. Need 100 more subscribers. So if you haven't already subscribed, you like this kind of content, you don't wanna miss anything. And you definitely don't want to miss anything coming up because there's a very exciting contest announcement coming up with a very desirable title uh, for the prize. So stay tuned for that. Hit like, subscribe, and notification. You won't miss it. So this record was one of my first classical records. Um, I was coming mostly from rock and the rock and roll world, and I wanted to start experimenting with classical and I chose this one because there was a recent reissue being promoted um, it was on the clavier label I actually have it here um, the clavier edition uh, was making the rounds uh, at the beginning of the vinyl renaissance and clavier produced about five titles from the EMI catalog and uh, this was the most popular one with good reason um, this is mastered uh, by Doug Sachs at the Mastering Lab. Um, RTI did the pressing and it says interestingly here, a single step processing was used for this limited edition release. Stamper was made uh, from the first generation master and not more than a thousand were pressed from each stamper. This process allows every record to be of test pressing quality. Um, this was a great, great addition, um, and I loved it so much that I picked up all the other ones <laughs> that I could find. Um, the original recording is on EMI, and it's on an imprint called Studio 2. The Studio 2 um, edition looks like this. This is the first one, which is quad. There is another one that is stereo, and I have that too here. This is the stereo edition. And there's also um, an H HMV green sleeve budget reissue available as well um, that sounds just as good. As a matter of fact, although I did a shootout, <coughs> excuse me, a shootout of all these, there wasn't much reason to because they all sound, they all sound spectacular. There's minor, minor differences. You know, I put on the quad first. I thought, oh my God, this is this is a amazing. And then I put on the stereo, and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing, <laughs> and so forth. They all are amazing. So don't worry about pressing qual pressing quality or mastering quality. They're all all excellent, including probably the new one. There's one um, apparently on. Uh, I think Speaker's Corner has one out right now. And that's probably worth picking up as well. Based on their track record, the fact that the tape is in uh, Europe, so uh, I see no reason why that wouldn't be a superb record as well. But um, the HMV green sleeve is available, you know, very cheaply, um, generally. And uh, if you can find the Clavier, that's a great one too. The originals uh, in this jacket are a little harder to find. Um, the, I, I think the, um, the speaker's corner is done in this jacket rather than some of the other alternatives. So let me tell you, you know, as someone coming from the rock realm, um, I wanted to dip my toe into classical and I thought this, is, this would be a good way to start. It's, 
you know, pr promoted as an audiophile album. I was a budding audiophile and um, so I picked it up and I absolutely fell in love with this record. This record is the ballet music of Les Cid, uh, composed by Jules Massenet. And it's done by uh, Louis Fermeau and the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra in their orchestra hall. And that is an amazing hall. And Louis Fermeau is an amazing conductor. The music is infectious. It is absolutely gorgeous construction and melody. Um, the melodies throughout this record is like, um, the, the Laced Ballet music is on the first side. There's about eight movements and each one has its own charm. Some are explosive and dynamic. Some are light and uh, um, quiet. But the record overall has achieved something that's unmatched in my opinion. And that is the engineering, it, the engineering is a perfect, perfect balance. There is such tremendous dynamic range on this record from cr crashing crescendos to delicate castanets and flutes in quiet passages, um, oboe, and it's just, it all holds together in a perfect balance. and. The engineer on this is Stuart Eltham, and he is not noted as the engineer, he's the balance engineer. And I think that's a very appropriate title for him because the balance achieved on this is perfect. Absolutely perfect. It is stunning. And when you hear this record reproduced properly, you will be smiling from ear to ear by the end of the record if you're not dancing, because uh, it's, I, I often use the word jaw-dropping, and this is one of those. It's one of those. It's a jaw-dropping record. Um, you'll be like, oh, what the hell did I just hear? Because it's so realistic. Um, just, it's just amazing. Well, at any rate, you can get any of these and be assured that you have a great sounding copy. So don't worry about that. Um, you're going to love the music, especially if you're coming from rock or other, other genres and you haven't really delved too deeply into classical, you're going to love this record. Um, the second side is also wonderful as well. Um, but the dynamics and the, the fireworks are on the first side. Um, it's a Spanish, Spanish themed, um, Spanish theme melodies, and it's just intoxicating. It really is. If any record could be described as ravishing, it's this. Just ravishing sound and performance. And I absolutely love it. To me, it's a record to die for. I will never let go of any of these copies. Unlike when you're upgrading other copies, you're like, oh, I can probably sell off this one. Not this. They're all staying, um, and that's a good sign. So. This is my record to die for for the week. If you have it, let me know what you think about it. If you don't have it, definitely search it out. Um, I think I've shown a little enthusiasm for it, so um, you can be assured that if our tastes are similar, that you're going to love this record. Um, until next time, I'm Scott for the Pressing Matters. Have a great day.